Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Cassidy. If it's not, thanks for always tuning into my videos. Today we're getting cozy. We have our cat Christmas sweater on. There's a Christmas tree up. There's snow decor everywhere. We love in the snow because we are going to go over my winter fantasy TBR. So this is not a TBR for like this year at all, but this is my current winter themed fantasies that I own that are on my shelves that I have not read yet. Sound good? Because I do know that I found it, I found it very hard to find adult polar fantasies out there. There's tons of middle grade polar fantasies, even YA polar fantasies, but I found a very big struggle in order to find adult ones. This entire list is adult, one borderlines on YA, but it's still in here. So I haven't read any of these, but I am excited to read them because I love an extreme setting. I think the setting can really add to a story. Winter horrors are one of my favorites, and again, I love a winter fantasy, and I want to get to some of these this year. So you could treat this as a choose my winter fantasy type video and comment down below which one you want to see me read, and maybe it'll be in a vlog, but I'm not promising anything. But here we go. Let's start off nice and easy with the Girl on the Mountain by Mark Lawrence. This is the second book in the Book of the Ice trilogy. You know, it's literally called the Book of the Ice trilogy. If you look at the cover, she's wearing like a big old jacket keeping her cozy and, and there's snow falling. Like this is winter themed. This is the one that I would say borders YA. I think that this is a lot of a younger, at least when I read the first one, I felt like it read a lot younger than any of Mark Lawrence's past work. But I'm saying borders because... I don't know what it's technically classified as, but it was an easy one to start with as I have read the first book in the series. This is the second in the series and we're following the same world that we read of in the book The Ancestor Trilogy, which is the Red Sister start. We're following Yaz, our main character, as she kind of just journeys around the world in the book of the Ancestor world in this whole world. I don't know what this like world would be called. The ice is just like all-encompassing and the ice is like growing and the whole plot of like Red Sister is that there's just like a smaller fraction of land that is now sustainable for most life and like easier to live on and so people are fighting over this land as it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and it all becomes icy and frozen so these stories follow the people of the ice the people that live on this ice and what happens there and the magic system you kind of start to learn about that there's like lore that's implemented into the book The Ancestor that you learn a little bit more about in this series. I actually really enjoyed the first one. I I really just enjoy anything Mark Lawrence writes. Uh, his writing style just really works for me. I find I relate to the characters. I find it accessible. I really enjoy it and I really need to continue this and you know it's polar fantasy so I think that these are the perfect coming months. I'm gonna continue with ones I know are for sure wintry because some of them are like I'm guessing so let's continue with the, the I, I know it's a winter book which we could do The Winter of Ice and Iron by Rachel Numir next. I really want to read this. I've never heard. I found this through booktube. One person talked about it once. I can't even remember who talked about it, but I need to read it. It sounds really good. I've actually read the first like 50 pages of it before and thought it sounded so intriguing, but I was just not in the mental place to read a complicated book and this was complicated and dense, but I, I think it could be really, really interesting. In this world, we're following a bunch of different nations that are at war. Uh, they're mostly at war with this person called the Mad King, and they're trying to figure out how to beat him. The thing is that each nation has powers to it, and these powers are ruled by bloodlines, and there are ways to get it. You can kill a bloodline off and then get that power. So the Mad King is just like expanding his ruling and his power all the time. There's also other ways to get it where just like making that person now on your side and getting allegiances. It's a really, I found it very interesting within the first 50 pages when I was learning about it, but it was super dense. The world is subject to indifferent gods and imminent spirits and midwinter storms across the land during the dark turn of the year. The ambitions of power mad kings seldom present the greatest threat to peace and prosperity. We're following a main character who I think ends up being a pawn and trying to figure out a way to destroy the Mad King, but they end up, I think they're like an heir, I think it's like an arranged marriage type political thing, and I think this sounds so interesting, but I have no idea how to explain it to you, but I would say like magic system, gods that are giving the magic, bloodline magic, spirits, 
winter setting, politics, all of those buzzwords, and I really enjoy this cover. I don't know why. It's, I love, there's like a shimmery sunset on it, and it's stunning. I really need to read this one. Then we have The Winter Road by Adrienne Selby. This says the path to redemption is paved with blood, and also on the back it says the empire will be born in spring, but it's forged in vicious winter. Winter vibes. This one, I, I, honestly, these are so hard to sum up because I've literally hold, like, I've literally heard no one talk about them, and so, like, I don't have a good sense of what they are because I haven't read them and no one else does because I've never heard anyone talk about them, so I also don't have a good sense from what other people have said about the book. This one follows our main character who there's, like, this circle of, like, treacherous land that they don't go through, but it makes it very hard to get, like, to trade with outside worlds and places, I think. No one has ever tamed the treacherous territory before, but an ex-soldier, veteran of a hundred battles, is determined to try. He's going to go through this. With a merchant caravan protected by a crew of skilled mercenaries, they embark on a dangerous mission to forge a road across the untamed wilderness that was once her home. But a warlord has risen in the wilds of the circle, uniting its clans and terrorizing its people. From acclaimed epic fantasy author Adrian Selby comes the brutally powerful story of a daring warrior traveling a path that might bring salvation to her people or lead her to ruin. I think it sounds good. I rem I've also started this one. Um, I just got really like blown away. I think last winter I just wasn't in the mindset for these like heavy fantasies and this one was just again very dense and I want to read it though. Then we have The Song of All by Tina LeCount Myers, caught between gods and priests. This is what that little thing says. Fantasy served cold and raw. This one is a book that has a lot of like Norse and Slavic folklore to it. Quick little editing, Cassidy, just to tell you I was wrong. Um, and it's actually a Scandinavian indigenous culture that is in this book, um, which is not the same as either of the things I said. I too have started this book and like I was interested. I was very interested. I was interested in it but I found myself getting often confused because I'm not as well experienced with this type of mythology and this type of culture and folklore and all of that so I felt it, it doesn't explain things to you. It doesn't hold your hands and that's fine and that's okay and I'm here for it. It shouldn't have to teach me these things but I wasn't prepared for it when I read it. But now that I know that, I'm waiting for a time where I'm prepared to sit down, to read it slowly, to take it all in, and to enjoy it. This is well as a place where humans war with immortals in the name of their shared gods. Urgen, a human warrior, is ruthless and lethal, a legend among the brethren of hunters, but even legends grow tired and disillusioned. Scared and weary of bloodshed, Urgen turns back on his oath and is calling to hide away and live a peaceful life as a farmer, husband, and father but his past is not so easily left behind when an ambitious village priest conspires with the vengeful comrades urgen has forsaken the fragile peace in the northlands of divina is at stake his bloody past revealed urgen's present unravels as he faces an ultimatum return to hunt the immortals or lose his child but with his son's life hanging on in the balance as urgen follows the tracks of the dark and desolate snow-covered forest it's not death he searches for but life i think this sounds really interesting i i, I really do and then we have The Ranger of Marzana by John Scovrin. Two siblings, two nations, one war for it all. I love a sibling on opposite sides kind of story. I have read the first chapter of this. I believe it was wintry in that chapter and it looks like there's snow on the cover. I'm a little bit guessing. I'm not 100% sure if this continues to be as polar fantasy, but I actually really think it is. It's why I picked it up because it seemed polar fantasy and I was looking for more adult polar fantasies. The Empire has destroyed the old ways. One woman will fight to bring them back in the first book of this breathtaking new fantasy series. We have our main character, Sonya, who was trained in hiding and is the last ranger of Marzana, an ancient sect of warriors who've protected their lands for generations. Her father is murdered by soldiers, so she decides to finally take action. Using her skills as ranger, she will travel across the bitter cold tundra and gain the allegiance of the only other force strong enough to take down the invaders. I literally just had to read the back to be like, this is a cold tundra. But nothing about her quest will be easy because back in the capital city, her brother is in training to be the most powerful sorcerer the world has ever seen, and he's fighting for the Empire. Two siblings, a sister and a brother on opposite sides of a war. I like that. 
I like when it's done. I, I liked it in Ashes of the Sun. I like, I'm probably gonna like it here. That kind of relationship just seems to work for me. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I need to read it. The last two on this list are for sure guesses. These are guesses. We have The Wolf of Aura and Euro, which is the first book in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen by K.S. Veloso. This one says, they called me the Bitch Queen, the She-Wolf, because I murdered a man, exiled the king the night before they crowned me. I also read the first chapter of this one and I felt like I got cold vibes from it. I don't remember if they said we were actually in a winter setting, but I think I got cold vibes from it, so I'm putting it on this list. I could be wrong and if I am wrong, let me know in the comments down below, but I, I think it is. Especially with like wolves around, I feel like wolves are normally in like a colder tundra, although I guess they're not always. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. It's a tale of a queen who must unite her divided land, even if she's hated by the very people she's trying to protect. I think that the main character in this will be very raw, and I'm very excited to try this book and see this main character. I do believe I know a certain book club, not mine, but a certain book club is doing this as one of their reads. I'm not letting you know because it's not announced yet, but keep an eye out for that book club announcement coming. It's not me. I'm not involved, but I do hopefully plan on reading this with them when they announce it. So yeah, I'm excited to read this one. I hope it's kind of wintry, but I could be lying to all of you right now. I'm 98% sure this next one is a lie, but I'm still putting it on this list because I have no chill. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I, I believe I've just been told on Discord by Maria that she didn't get cold vibes, but it's based on Norse mythology, which is often cold and wintry. So I'm still putting it on this list as like an um, honorable mention. This is probably not wintry. I have not read it, but it's based on Norse mythology. So like, mm, maybe it will get colder. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but I'm just going to say that I have my eye on this as maybe a wintry read. Those are all my current polar winter fantasies, polar fantasies, whatever you want to call them. They're winter settings, winter themed. The coldness will be in the setting and the chill and it'll be like perfect read for sitting around a fireplace with some hot chocolate or a coffee if you're me or a glass of wine or like apple cider, any kind of drink really by a fire with a blanket and your read and you're nice and cozy and you're warming up after a cold winter day. I need those moments in my life. And yes, I like to read about the cold. I don't like to live in the cold. <sighs> okay, um, that's the end. Uh, let me know down below if any of these are books that you want to read, if you know any other polar fantasies. And if you're not feeling chatty, you can leave me a snowflake emoji. It's cold time. We're time for winter emojis. And then if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstagram, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves a remarkable day.